Okay, so on this topic we're going to talk about um, fluids and uh, the different kind of uh, fluids they have in it and uh, down I'll have some uh, video, uh, some links to podcasts and uh, blogs that are very interesting. Um, the reason I'm talking about it is that it's kind of been taught that we do no harm by giving too much fluids. And there's more literature that is starting to show that we are doing arms. And not so much uh, because we're giving fluid, but because we're giving kind of the wrong fluids. A lot of the fluids out there have the wrong concentrations and we're worsening the condition of the patient. So understanding what kind of fluids to use is very useful. And also the understanding, um, so we're going to go to the physiology of every disease, but understanding how your disease is going, so vomiting, dehydration, uh, shocks, and different type of shocks, then you can understand what type of fluids you need to administer. And um, So that would be the first thing, and that's why mostly the, the blogs we'll be talking about, is that we are doing some arms, in some condition because of the fluids that we're giving because they do not have the proper uh, concentrations uh, and so for example um, a lot of people um, that don't see it but normal saline is acidic in a certain way and the reason it is acidic is because this concentration of chloride is so high and why is that? Is that because now our body is tr will have tendency to kind of keep that chloride, and because it's charged with bicarb the same way, kidneys will have tendency to liberate that bicarbs out. And when bicarbs is out, then you're kind of left with the body with some more acid. So you're, you're it's called hyperchloremic acidosis, and you can create that as well in burn patient or people that you massively transfuse a lot of fluids because of that. So, <clears throat> obviously, it, it's simplified because it's um, base acid and base is way more complicated than that. But basically, this is the jets of of the whole thing. So, um, so let's get to it. So, if we have uh, vessels, so this is. Um, or vascular and this is her cells. Uh, there's two compartment basically, two massive trans, uh, compartment which one separates in two subcategories. So we have intravascular and extravascular. And in the extravascular we have fluids inside the cells and in between the cells. But we'll stay with the two compartment mostly uh, to speak about most of them. So our body always likes to be zen, meaning that it always tries to have an homostasis, so always in a state of balance. And we'll represent this so in normal condition, our body, if we do like a. Actually, let's do it more. There you go, a top. So it always tries to be well balanced, straight up. So the normal osmolarity, uh, in osmolarity basically is the pool of some uh, that you have on one side or the other. So it's always trying to be on equal side, which is around the 300 marks, to plus or minus depending, um, which is about normally two times the sodium. There's a big formula and everything but about roughly about two times the sodium plus other stuff as we're going to see and um, so we always try to keep fluids in a balance so if the osmolarity on both sides are equal then no fluids will be moving they'll stay where they are and um, and uh, the they'll stay in a, no, a good state. Uh, fluids, just like human beings, are kind of on the lazy side, meaning that they won't go against the current. They're always going to go where it's easier to go. 
So fluid will move from minus to plus, meaning that uh, meaning that what they will do is the fluids would always kind of move from the less concentrated to the more concentrated. And it's very important to understand that because sometimes the concept will kind of uh, makes more sense as we explain other stuff, but sometimes it doesn't, we like, well, that was more concentrated, but yeah, you changed it and everything. So, so less concentrated to, pl to more concentrated. And what we're talking about is that basically some, something that has uh, the graded os osmolarity fluid will go by diffusion from one side to the other in one of the compartments. And why is it important to understand all this? And because basically we have three categories of fluid that we can administer. Um, hypo, tonic, iso, tonic, and hypertonic. So they're, they're going like this. So this one is the most concentrating, this one is the less, and this one is more the well balanced. So if we go back into our example over here, meaning that, uh, um, yeah, so if we go back on our uh, concentration over here, we're always going to try to go from a hypotonic state to a hypertonic. So our fluids will always go from an hypotonic to an hypertonic state. Um, uh, and uh, azotonic is pretty much about uh, uh, they'll be kind of on the on the same size, but it's not always like that. But mostly, the rule of thumb, let's say. Um, so, in most of the fluids that we have, if you look on the bags, they're always going to say about the osmolarity and thing. But don't let yourself fool from that. Uh, a good example of this is the NS and with uh, D5 water. Uh, this one on the back, you'll see that the osmolarity is pretty high, so it's called almost a hypertonic solution in the bag. But once you give it, it's actually in a hypo, uh, it's more a hypotonic solution. And the reason why is that you will use the sugar, and that will decrease the, um, so the cells will use the sugar of your fluids and uh, and then what it has done is it will decrease the osmolarity of it. So what does affects this osmolarity? This is about after so this is about Three, um, three uh, molecules that we have in our body, and a fourth one that we can introduce. Uh, we can introduce also the other three, but the ones that we produce mostly that will create a great osmolarity. And again, all this is kind of a rule of the thumb. Sometimes it's more uh, stuff, but to simplify stuff, that's how we're going to do it. So uh, the first one is the sodium. Uh, sodium is big, so where salt goes, water follows as well because sodium is very hypertonic. So that's why when you have a hypertonic saline, which is like 7%, uh, 20%, depending, there's different 3.5%, uh, there's different uh, concentration. Well, versus the 0.9% that we usually use in, in most patients, uh, it becomes hypertonic. So sodium is very hypertonic. It will draw uh, the fluid towards it because again, if you increase the sodium somewhere, it becomes more hypertonic and water will go from a less to a more. The other one that is good, that is big, is glucose. And so sugar is a big one as well. So as your sugar raise, your, your, uh, your fluid will, uh, your compartment will be more hypertonic and therefore your fluid. So if you look if you look at volume expander like pantospan and other starch is basically a big molecule of sugar and this is the reason why is that because uh, fluid the sugar will pull the fluid out of your viewer 
um, other compartments of your extravascular compartment into your intravascular and increase your volume. So this is why um, glucose is very is one of the other. The other one is albumin, and this one is a big and important one, especially in people like with liver disease and stuff. And that's why they have like cirrhosis um, because the albumin cannot hold off. It goes. Uh, the flu because the, their albumin is so low they don't have that pool anymore so basically the fluid goes where it's hypertonic meaning that the osmolarity is greater on the other side because the osmolarity cannot pull on this side of the intravascular and the other one is ETOH and this is the reason that we have like so bad so many ba uh, hangovers and you're uh, peeing a lot and you have headaches it's basically higher your E2H is so that means your alcohol it means that it's gonna pull some fluids into your intravascular and you're gonna pee it out and or um, uh, you're gonna um, yeah, get rid of it and that's why you're dehydrated because your brain is dehydrated so your vessels are constricted and that's why you have the headache and feel like crap so A2H is a big one. So somebody that has a high A2H, that means their smolarity in their intravascular will be very elevated. That means the fluid will shift. So why do we need to understand those four of them? Well, because the reason that we need to understand that is that once you understand a problem, then you can choose the proper fluids for what you're doing. So let's say we have someone with DKA. So that means that they have a lot of sugar in here. Very, very high sugars. So what does it do to the fluids? Well, we just saw that one of the four main uh, pullers are, are sugars. So if you have a high sugar, that means that your fluids from intravascular will go intravascular and you'll dehydrate it. Your, uh, you will dehydrate your cells, so your cell will kind of shrink on, and then you have the fluids. Well, if I give an isotonic to this person, the fluid will mostly stay intravascular. But what do they do to the compartment intravascular? Nothing, because the fluid will mostly stay there. And again, uh, it's kind of like, for example, an isotonic is a normal saline. One third of the bag will kind of stay in the veins, and the other ones will will kind of go um, around. But just the concept of it is to kind of understand. So, and in the intravascular, really, what you need to do here is replenish over here. So that means that because this is hypertonic, I need to decrease the tonicity or the similarity of the intravascular to a point that the fluid will slowly go extravascular so that means decrease the similarity over here so that the similarity of the extravascular becomes bigger and it can give fluids and so that's where an hypotonic will be better so half saline will will help for that obviously d5 is a good one but because my sugar is already high and i'm not having uh, i'm having issue with it probably a half saline would be better for those ones for the first layers um and if there are um uh, if they're unstable, so that means like I need more intravascular because they've been depleted so much because they peed, then I need more an isotonic to replenish over here. Versus on the other side, then I can use an hypertonic if it would be the opposite. So if I have a head injury where I'm trying to decrease the number of the fluids that or the, the space that it has in the head, then I'll try to pull the fluid over here to leave more space of the brain so that it doesn't uh, shift and have the, um, uh, the coning. So basically then that's where we start using mannitol, which is again a big sugar uh, drink or hypertonic solution. So that way you can pull fluids and everything. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this because a lot of the fluids that we use uh, some people kind of misuse and everything, so I wanted to do a quick talk on that. If you guys have any more questions, just don't hesitate to ask me.